and remember these two things about prayer. One is that no evil, no matter how great it is, is bigger than our relationship with God in prayer. Amen. No evil is greater than that. Because God has put us into a place where we know that he is able to do what he wants to do. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. I don't know if they can put that up there. Isaiah 54, 17. I want you to know what the Bible says there. It talks to us about that very thing, that there is no evil that is greater than the strength of God. Are you there? Going? Can you get there? Uh, or let, me, let me just uh, say to you what it, what it says there. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, 17, that there is no weapon, there is no weapon formed against the body of Christ, no weapon formed against you that can prosper. Amen. No tongue that is set in judgment is greater than what you can rebuke. That's right. You can rebuke it because we have the strength of the Holy Spirit within our lives. The second thing I want you to know about your prayer, powerful prayer relationship with God in prayer is that you have to get over the hurdle of waiting on God in prayer. That's the problem Christians have. Jesus. We want God to work like instant oatmeal. That's right. And if he doesn't, we're mad. That's right. But I want you to know something. We got to know that there is no evil that can come against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Yes, Jesus. All right? Amen. And the other thing is that we must recognize that we must get over the hurdle. Of waiting in prayer. Right. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. The Bible tells us there. Them that wait upon the Lord. Man. Them that wait upon the Lord. Shall renew their strength. That's right. Isaiah 40 verse 31. If you have your Bible open it there and read it. I want you to read what the Bible tells you and I. About seeking God and having his strength. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Today is the day when the devil wants to destroy if he can, but we're not going to allow him to do that. Right. Listen to verse 31, if you will. The Bible is very clear, but there's uh, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Amen. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. This past summer, my wife, or this past year, my wife and I were able to go to Alaska on a tour, on a cruise. Amen. And uh, one of the things that amazed me was eagles. We saw an eagle that stood at least three or four feet high. Huge, huge bird. When they're up there, they look about this big, you know. But that thing was huge. And when he would spread his wings, they were like, four or five feet out there. That's right. Big, huge bird. And you, you know, they say that an eagle can flap his wings one time, and when he does, he can hold them out, and he can glide for 11 miles. Wow. wow. One flap of the wings. Wow. Then the weight upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up their wings <laughs> like eagles. Right. So when you're going through a problem, you're going through a difficult time. We must understand that we can wait on God. Why? Because he gives us the wings of an eagle. We can soar and stay up there until God is ready to answer our problem. The problem in the 21st century is that we forget that and right away we weaken down. When God doesn't handle our problem in a week's time, right away we're back to what, 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 what we did before. We give in. It's too easy to give in. Right. A man in the home came in, at, or a woman, I take it back, it was a woman that came in, and she had been hooked on prescription drugs for 23 years. Wow. A beautiful lady, but she was totally messed up. Educated lady, but she was messed up in her mind because of these drugs. Right. She came in, and she was broken. <laughs> her father brought her in, and, and she was broken. And she cried. We prayed for her. She stayed in the home for a couple months. All right? And she never took another pill in two months. Amen. And she was free. She was free. The Lord delivered her 
from instantly from all that use of Oxycontin and, and Percocets and, and all the other stuff that she was taking. She was taking pills for 23 years. Lord delivered her. Amen. And for two months she was fine. One day she woke up and they gave her a chore in the home. Now this was a lady who was a manager of a bank. I think she worked in a bank. And they told her, today your duty, your chore is to go in and do the bathrooms. All right? That was enough to undo all that God had done, Pastor David. Oh, my God. Everything that, that God had done. Oh, no! Don't you realize that in my family, we had servants who did the, the bathroom. So Pastor Ray told her, he said, well, now you are the servant. <laughs> well, I ain't doing that. And that one little thing took her back to drugs, and we've never seen her again. Oh, That's right. I'm telling you today, you're going to go through some things in your life, but we've got to get over the hurdle of waiting on God. And we have to be like the eagle that soars over the problem. We've got to get there. Thank you. So let me say this to you. We must remember something about the God that we serve. Jesus. We're not playing with some Mickey Mouse God here. Right. You know, they try to make Allah God. What a lie. The Muslims say that Allah is the same as our God. That's a lie from the devil. That's right. Amen. Allah, if you look him up and you read about him, he was the, the, God, the moon god. The god of darkness, in other words. Right. Others try to make Hare Krishna god. Or Buddha god. Or Confucius god. Or T.D. Jakes god. So don't talk about that. That's T.D. Jakes. Well, I love T.D. Jakes. He's a good man, but he's not God. Some people, they won't pay tithe in church. But as soon as T.D. Jakes comes to church, to town, they'll write him a $500 check. But they can't pay tithe in church. T.D. Jakes didn't die for you. One day a man came to Pastor Ray. He'd been in our church for three years. And he used to adamantly say, I don't pay tithe. I don't believe it's biblical in the New Testament. So you're very open and say, I don't pay tithe because I don't believe I'm bound to tithing because it's an Old Testament principle. He didn't know nothing. Right, well, so he was open to Pastor Ray and myself. And he, he didn't mind telling me I won't pay tithe because it's not biblical. It's not New Testament. It's Old Testament. So then T.D. Jakes came to town and he went to see T.D. Jakes. T. Jakes said he, wa he needed to do something. I don't know what it was he was picking up money for. And he needed 500 people to get $500. And this man wrote a check. 500 bucks. All right. Then he came back boasting about it. Oh, I gave to the man of God. Oh my God. Tell everybody in church. Didn't tell us, but he told everybody else and everybody else told us. You know how it is? Yeah. Don't say nothing unless you don't want the pastor to hear about it. Because if you do say it, somebody's going to tell him. Sooner or later, pastor is going to find out. <laughs> so he got back to us. A week after he had come back boasting about the $500, he got sick. The man got sick and he was in Denver General Hospital. Or in one of the hospitals. I don't remember which one. He was in a hospital. And he called up, panicked at 9 o'clock in the morning. As soon as they got into the office, I need to have Pastor Ray come to see me. I'm in the hospital. <laughs> so when I got in, they gave me the note. They said, oh, Pastor Ray's not in yet. And uh, they, they need Pastor Ray, this brother wants Pastor Ray to go to the hospital. So I looked at his name. I knew who the man was. Right. He's at Denver General. Or he's at one of the hospitals. Uh -huh. Well, Pastor Ray it wasn't there yet. But in my mind, in my heart, I said... I'm going to call this man. That's right, Jesus. I'm going to call him at that hospital. That's right. And I'm going to tell him, listen, you called the wrong number, brother. That's right. Why don't you call a Texas? That's right. Call T.D. Jake's office. Right. See if he'll get on a plane and come down and pray for you. Yeah. 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 Something
people don't like that, but it's the truth, man. You don't go to McDonald's, eat a hamburger, and then go to Burger King and pay for it. <laughs> we have to get over the hurdle of waiting on God in his time when he wants us to know what to do. We're not messing with some little God. God is a God of order. He's a God that understands who we are. But I want you to know how big God is. We're praying to a God that has awesome power. Amen. I mean, his power is great. Jesus. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 12, right there where we're at. Verse number 12 says these words. Listen to it. This is our God. He is God who measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. Now, it doesn't say there in that verse of scripture that he measured all the waters and all the all the oceans and all the lakes and all the water on the earth in his hands. It says he measured all the waters in his hand, in the hollow of one hand. That means he put the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and every other ocean in the world, plus all the large bodies of water, the seven lakes that are found in the Great Lakes, all the big water bodies of water, they all fit into his hand. Now you tell me that isn't a big God. Tell me that God is an able. He can put all the water in the hollow of one hand. And we think that God can't handle our problem. But God is able to do what he says he will do. Now in verse 15 and 6, 15, 16 and 17, read this. Behold, about this, we're talking about the same God. Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket. That means all the nations in the earth all the continents in the, in the earth are like a drop in a bucket to him and are counted as small as dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing. All the islands of the world, in other words. He lifts them up like a little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. Now, nor it's beast sufficient for a burnt offering. Now, if you've never ever been to Lebanon, you've never seen those, those places that's right in the land of, of the Bible. I've been in Israel. I've been at the border of Lebanon, and there's forests. I mean, those trees are huge, and there's thousands upon thousands of them. But he says that, that and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, no matter how big it is. It's not bigger than our God. Then he says in verse 17, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing or worthless. Right, Jesus. So we're not dealing with some Mickey Mouse God here. Right. Our God, we're praying to a God that has power to change the circumstance. Yes. Psalm 62. Go back there with me, if you will. I'm going to take you through the Bible, so keep your Bible open. Jesus. Psalm 62. And read this with me. I want you to hear what he's saying here that is so important for you and I to get a hold of. See, sometimes we don't recognize the God that we serve. Yes. We live in defeat. Psalm 62, verse 9 says these words. Surely... Men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor or lighter than a smoke. In other words, they're nothing to God. That's right. And when somebody comes to tell me that, you know, be careful, you've got to be careful. Don't, you know, don't, don't say that and the devil will get you. I'll never forget one time I, I was preaching and I just come back to the Lord. I'm a backslider. I was backslidden for 14 and a half years. And I was a preacher before that. But I miserably backslid over people. I got so hurt with people in the church. I hated Christians. 14 years, I hated you guys. Not you, not you. They're good people. But just because you were called Christians, I hated them. I tell my wife, I don't like Christians. So let's go to church. I don't go to church. Why? Because I hate Christians. I don't like them. <laughs> That's what I tell her. She's sitting right there. <clears throat> but the Lord knows better, man. The God's going to turn you around one way or another. You see, he got the final answer. Yes. I ran from him. I ran for 14 and a half years. I ran. That's right. And he backed me up into a corner. Jesus. That's another 
that's another story, but Man, he got me, he got my attention. Anyway, so here, here, here is the thing to see. No matter what, no matter what, God is great. He, we're nothing to him. Yet we're everything to him. But when they start telling you about this and that, somebody told me, I came back to the Lord, I'm preaching, and I'm preaching, and I said something because I just had an encounter with God and he told me who I was. See, when I came back to preach, the devil started to work in my mind and said, nobody would ever listen to me again. Right. Said, they know your past. Jesus. They know where you've been. Jesus. Think anybody's going to ever listen to you? And I used to just cower under that because I'm well, all, condemn all kinds of condemnation from my past. And one day the Lord said, told me to stop crying. I was laying at the, uh, uh, sitting at that platform where I sit at New Hope every day. And I was, I was, I knelt down to pray during time of prayer. I, for one, one whole year, I prayed, and I started crying before God. Every service, I cried with bitter tears. And for a whole year, I did that. After I got saved, I came back to the Lord. Every service, I just weep and fill up the handkerchief with snot. <laughs> and then, a year later, on a Sunday morning, Pastor Ray made the altar call, and I'm sitting up on the platform, Pastor Ed. And I knelt down and I started to cry. It was like I had for a year. And I heard the voice of the Lord. He said, Eddie, why are you crying? Jesus. Why are you crying? Huh? Man. I said, because I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry that I didn't preach. I'm sorry that I, left, I put your name to an open shame. I'm sorry that I backslid. I'm sorry that that people had to see my life and see that I, I wasn't serving you. I'm, I'm so sorry. And he said, a year ago, at this altar, you asked me to forgive you. And I did. Jesus. He said, now, get up off that, that your knees. Stop crying and preach my word. Jesus. Yeah. I've been doing it ever since. I'm ashamed of that. Now I'm preaching the gospel. But you see, the problem that, that, that humanity has is that we don't recognize who our God is. Amen. So when somebody, and right after that, I got up from there, I preached, some, Pastor Ray asked me to preach the next Sunday night. So I got up and I told the people, I said these words, I said, I will never give the devil another day of my life. Yes. And when I got up the platform, this brother comes up to me and he puts his hand on my shoulder, Pastor Nathan, like this. He puts his hand on He says, be careful what you say. Be careful. Don't mess with the devil. <laughs> In other words, he wanted me to be afraid or he wanted me to be ashamed or he wanted me to back down and cower down again but the devil was telling me a lie. God just told me what I'm going to do. Jesus. And I said, brother, get your hand off my shoulder. Jesus. What's wrong with you? I said, I'm not afraid of the devil anymore. He had my mind all messed up for a year. He had me in tears on my knees up for a year. But Jesus just delivered me. Jesus just set me free. My God is greater. I'm nothing, I'm nothing in the sight of the devil by myself. But with Jesus Christ, the Bible says when I speak the name of Jesus, the devil trembles. The devil is going to mess with God. We're serving a mighty God here. A God who has power. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 66, 1, that the earth is his footstool. His footstool. Pastor Nathan, he puts his feet on the earth, the big earth. And he relaxes there. That's how big our God is. We serve a mighty God. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 25 and 26 tells us that he is got the greatest power of any, any, anyone in the universe. Jesus. It's a big God. Right, amen. He's able to handle your problem today. Yes. He'll be able to heal your body. Amen. He'll be able to take you from problem to victory. Amen. I don't care if you don't have a job. Jesus. My God shall supply my needs according to his riches in glory. I don't care. I don't care. God can do whatever he wants to do. I came to Denver, Colorado in 2004. I didn't even have a car. I came on the Greyhound bus. Now you got to know something. That's humility. That's humble. That's really being humiliated. When in 1990, I was worth $1.6 million in cash. 
plus all the all the property I owned. I, I, I pastored a bigger church than the one Pastor Ray Fixer pastors. Right. I had five, or excuse me, I had three businesses in Albuquerque at that time. Jesus. I've had lots of money. I've gone all over the world. I've been in different continents. I've been able to sit with doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs. Jesus. My best friend was Ernest House. He was a tribal chairman, the first tribal chairman for the Ute Mountain Tribe. His grandfather was the last chief. Jesus. I sat with big people of, of high esteem. That's right. Yet I was reduced to nothing. I'm driving, riding in a Greyhound bus <laughs> from Albuquerque to Denver. And my wife had preceded me two months before. Man, she came to Denver. Jesus. The Lord told her that we had to go to Denver from Phoenix. She said, you got to go to Denver and, and find Pastor Ray. So finally, after three years of working with me, trying to get me convinced, she brought a U-Haul truck to our driveway and packed all this furniture up. <laughs> and she said... On Saturday morning, she said, get in the truck, we're going to Denver. And because I'm like most of you men in here, well, bien macho, you know. I said, I ain't going. <laughs> so my wife, my wife left me. <laughs> she took off on me. That little beautiful woman just left me. <laughs> she said, all right. She rolled the window down. She said, all right. I'll see you when you get there. And we left. <laughs> funny now, but it wasn't funny then. <laughs> I sat on a bench in my house empty. All it was was a little bench that my wife used to cut my hair on and, and, and the, my clothes in the, in the closet and nothing else. <laughs> and I was 58 years old. Been halfway around the world, passing a large church. So I started talking to myself. I said, what's wrong with this picture? Eh? <laughs> Been halfway around the world, made all kinds of money. Pastor a big church, owned all kinds of business. And you reduce the sitting on a bench in an empty house. <laughs> I'm talking to myself, right? I know you don't do that, but I did that. I'm not. And the Holy Ghost came and spoke into my life. And he said these words. It didn't, I didn't hear it in here. I heard it in here. And he said to me these words. He said, Eddie, you're sitting on a bench in an empty house because that's where you want to be. You could be on that truck on the way back to where I want you to be. I knew then I had lost. Man. I knew that it was over. I want you to know something. I don't care what. Our life is nothing without God. But when we have God in our lives, everything is possible. For what is impossible with man is possible with God. I'm preaching at you now and I'm telling you, you don't have to live in your misery. You don't have to worry about the brujo. Forget that. That not, don't make no difference. <laughs> God is great. Thank Let me tell you how great our God is. This is how big he is. Thank you, Jesus. It is said that there are 7,000 stars that are visible to the naked eye. Of these 7,000 stars that are in the sky, 2,000 of them can be viewed by the, by the human eye at one time. Jesus. Have you ever laid out in the, in the summertime in the and the grass and looked up and seen all the stars. Man. I remember when you used to be able to see the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper and, and all the star, the North Star, and, and you just stay there and look at them all night long. With a, vi with a visible eye, with a naked eye, you can see 2,000 of those 7,000 stars at one time. Seems impossible, but that's what they claim. Right. But now let me say this to you. That seems like a big, big thing. But research says these words that there are over 200 billion stars or more in this galaxy alone. 200 billion stars in this galaxy. That's more than you can even fathom, or I can fathom, 200 billion stars. Now the key to this is this. The Bible says clearly that God hung the stars in the heaven. And he named each one of them. Yes. Now that's a big God. Yes. And he remembers the name of them. Right. But go even further than that. God knows 7 billion people on the face of this earth today. And he's got every hair in each one of our heads yes. counted. Yes. And he knows when one falls out. Yes. Tell me we don't serve a big God. Yes. 
Tell me my God can handle your little problem. Yes. My little problem. Right. He can do anything. Yes. Our problem is the mountain won't move. That's right. Why? Because we don't know how. Remember what I said about prayer? That's right. There is no evil greater than our relationship in prayer with God. And the second thing, we must get over the hurdle of waiting on God. Right. We want it in our time. We want it the way we want it. We want it to, to be the way we say. But it's not that way. It's God's purpose. The Bible says that the very breath on our lips, the very breath that comes out, belongs to God. It all belongs to Him. So when we see that, we see we're, we're dealing with a big God. The second thing about this big God is that when we, when the wait seems too long and you want to give up, you must know what God says to you in his word about not giving up. Jesus. Go with me to Isaiah 49 and verse 15, if you will. Isaiah 49, verse 15. Quickly read it with me. Yeah. I want you to see something here. I want us to see what the Bible says about this great God that we serve. Amen. He's not some Mickey Mouse God, remember I said. Say it with me. He's not a Mickey Mouse God. Mickey Mouse. Now say it like you want to tell the devil that. He's not a Mickey Mouse God. He gets mad when you say that. Kind of thing. <laughs> devil hates that. When you know who you are. Thank you, Jesus. When you know who you are. Yes, Jesus. Verse 15 of, of Isaiah 49 says this, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not co have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget. But listen to this. Yet, this is God speaking, I will not forget you. Yeah. So when the, the wait seems long and you seem like you want to give up, understand God has not forgotten where you are. Yeah. God is going to take care of you. God is going to meet your need. God is going to take all that you have and turn it around for good. What the devil means for evil, God will make it good. I'm here to tell you today, you're not just anybody. You are the cream of the crop. Because you were purchased with the blood of the only begotten Son of God. He gave his life for you. And there's nothing the devil can do to destroy you unless you give in to the work of the devil. See, God said in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, he said these words, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you're getting up in faith. Amen. I hope you're standing up in faith and saying, my God, I'm going to let this God do what he wants to do in my life. Amen. He's going to take hold of me. He's going to bless my life. Amen. I want you to know something. I know Pastor Vince. I know how he preaches. Yeah. This man of God believes the Lord. Yeah. He's a man who trusts God. Yeah. He's a man who won't give up. Yeah. When Pastor Vince started in this ministry, he went through the valleys. He's been through building after yeah. building yeah. and place after yeah. place. Yeah. And when they were ridiculing him, say, he don't never going to get nobody. He's not going to have a church. Yeah. I want you to know him and Susan yeah. stood up and said, we serve a mighty God. He's going to take care of us. He's going to give us a building. He's going to bless our lives. I remember when he had to play the piano and do it all. He did it all by himself. Now his daughter is here. Praise God for her. That she's here. And his son-in-law, those that are here with him. And praising the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're sitting in a beautiful place here. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. Don't, don't even get comfortable in this little place. Don't get comfortable. The revival is coming. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a revival before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. People are going to flock through that door Amen. of all shapes, of all sizes, Amen. of all colors. Amen. I mean, from the Vato Loco. You know? And from the Pinto Viejo. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> to the mayor. Right. He needs Jesus too. The policemen. I don't care. They all need God. 
They'll walk through that door. They'll come one day. I remember when I started in Albuquerque, uh, I pastored an Assembly of God churches for years. And then the Lord called me out and I started my own church. It was called New Hope Mid, New Hope Center. How ironic, no? <laughs> New Hope Center, that's what it's called. Started New Hope Center in 1979. And uh, I started at the YMCA. It was a condemned school. And they let the YMCA use the gymnasium. That's the only part that they left open. And so I went to the YMCA and asked them, could I use the gym? on Sundays and they said well we're not doing anything on Sundays so you can use it so I went to the YMCA into the gym and if you've ever been in a gym you know that the, the acoustics are terrible right. you say something and it rings about five times right. and then you put a PA system it's even worse man right. can't understand what they're saying it's just a bunch of loud noise going bounce, bouncing back off the walls right. but we started having church I took 90 people I started with 90 people that I had and uh, that Sunday morning, I was going to start, and my son, Eddie, and some others brought in the, the instruments, and we get ready to have church. At 8 o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call from a, uh, another group of people in another church who I had ministered to and spoken to uh, while they had a pastor. But that morning, they got to the church, and the church building had a big sign on it with a, with a lock on the door. They had seized the church and locked the door because the pastor had not paid the bills. The pastor had gone in the middle of the night, took all the money that they had in the bank and left. And there was about a, a hundred of them. And so they called me on the phone about 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm getting ready to go to my first service at, at, the, at the YMCA. And they called me on the phone. And this brother, his name was Brother Franz Francia, he called me. He said, Pastor, we don't know what to do. We got to the church and it's locked. We don't know where to have church. Can we come to your church? And he didn't know I had, I had already left the church I was in and starting a new, building, a new church. And I said, sure. But I said, don't go to the other church. I'm not there anymore. Oh, no. He said, where are you at? And I said, I'm at the YMCA. Where is that? I said, downtown in Albuquerque, the old Albuquerque High School. He said, that's not, you can't be there. It's condemned. I said, come on down. We opened a condemned building. <laughs> so that morning I started with 200 people. Amen. You know, started church with 200 people. All right? And then, a month and a half later, they told me, we can't have you here anymore. There's too many people, and there's too much danger on the people because they condemned the church because it had asbestos in it. So they had to get us out. So now we're back in the wilderness, like Pastor Vince, okay? We're back in the wilderness. Where are we going to go? So I go, and I'm driving down a street called Central, and there's a, that's a, where all the hookers hung out and all the dope dealers were, you know? In those years, man, you know, if you know Albuquerque, you know, that's where, uh, that's where everything happened, on Central, man. And so uh, right down the street from us, right down the street from where, where the Lord took me, that right, right on that corner, there was a drugstore, and the drugstore used to sell syringes to the, drug, to, to the dope fiends in a drive-up window. They'd drive up and he'd sell them a, a syringe so they can go fix drugs. We're right in the middle of it. Well, we went down there and I, I'd seen this warehouse and I said it was empty and a big sign said for, for rent and for lease. And so I talked to the people and they said, sure, you can come in and lease it. Uh, well, we'll lease it to you for $1,500 a month. Well, that was back. I understand that was in about 19... Uh, 81 that was a lot of money 1500 bucks man, right. but I said okay. We'll, we'll take it. All right He said you got to give me the first of the last month. I didn't have 15 cents <laughs> What's this three thousand dollars? <laughs> I said all right, we'll take care of it Monday. Can I have the key today? <laughs> I said, sure you can have the key today. I'll see you Monday to bring me the three thousand dollars So that day on Friday Man, we went into that place. It's just a big old huge warehouse, man. And they had those heaters that hung on the ceiling, you know, and you turn them on, it sounded like a truck going <laughs> all the way across. You couldn't hear yourself. So we said, okay. So I told him, what, he said, they said, what are we going to do first? What wall are we going to knock down first? I said, no, we're going to knock the walls down. Not yet. We're going to pray, man. Jesus. We got until Monday morning coming with three grand, man. We're going to pray this whole weekend. We're going to pray. Amen. And we started a prayer meeting. Well, long story short, we had the $3,000 on Monday. We went into that building, and God blessed, 
and we packed it out and we kept moving like Pastor Vince, one place to another. Yeah. I want you to know you're not done here. Amen. You're not done here. They used to tell me all the time, you'll never make it. You know, I don't know why, because they would go to my church and there'd be lots of cars and, and they would say, well, man, there's lots of people in there, but nobody worked. Jesus. They were all on welfare Sorry. or running from a warrant. <laughs> oh, nobody, nobody had a job. It was not easy, man. man. But I want you to know something. God is about to do something yeah. great here. Yeah. There is no doubt in my mind that Pastor Vince and Sister Susan are going to see a glorious outpouring. The revival is coming. Say it with me. The revival is coming. The revival is coming. Pueblo, look out. The revival is coming. When it seems too long in the wait and it seems like you want to give up, don't forget that God said, I'll never forget you. Don't forget that he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. God in Isaiah 4, 64, 4 says, I will never leave you or fail. God doesn't know how to fail. The Bible says in Psalm 62, verse 5, David said these words, My soul waits silently on yes, God. Yes. And on God alone do I wait. Yes, for my expectation is from Him. Yes, I'm telling you something. Amen. New Home Ministries, don't sit by. Amen. You begin to work. Amen. And you begin to do what you got to do. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Get behind your pastors. Yes. Begin to work with them. Amen. Come to your pastors and say, What can I do? Gear up. Man. You've got two ushers out there now or two greeters out there. Get you about ten of them. Jesus. You've got three Sunday school. How many Sunday school teachers you got? Double it. Jesus. You say, why? They're not here yet. Well, you got to, if you want people to come, you have to build it. Yes, yes Jesus. Man. Man. If you're not ready for them, if they show, if, if 200 people showed up today, you'd all panic. Jesus. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> we only brought one roll of toilet paper. <laughs> Get all of that. Follow Pastor Vince. He's a man of faith. Follow him. <laughs> Get behind him. He's got, a, he's got, a, he's got a, a vision. He wants to see the glory of God here. He'd been working in this city for a lot of years, and they told him he wouldn't make it. But you know, when I met Vince, I knew he was going to make it. You want to know why? Because God had to bring him from way down deep. Jesus, He's a man the devil tried to kill in the world. He had to look in his Bible like this. People say, why does he have to do that? He does that because that's how God works in his life. But he's a man who can preach the gospel. His wife was preached to the ladies in our church last week. Man. My God, this Woo! lady is like an evangelist. Man. You've got some powerful people here. Woo! Get behind them. Work with them. Don't let your problem get greater than your God. Yes. Amen. Let know that God is going to be there. Yes, Jesus. Let me close this up. I'm having fun. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm having a great time. Yeah. Let me tell you this. If they say it's going to snow, it started to snow when I came in. I don't know what it's going to look like when you get out. Don't be, a, don't be afraid of the snow tonight. Yeah. Don't be afraid. I'll tell you what. In Denver, it's snowing right now. They say there'll be nine inches by five o'clock tonight. All right. They say they're going to close Monument Pass. I don't care. My wife and my are going home tomorrow morning. I don't care what they say. Right, let me say this to you. Don't be afraid of it. 79,000 people. Go watch the Broncos throw a little piece, a little ball yeah, that's right. in the middle of a storm. Yes, that's right. Right. No way that they can barely see the ball. That's right. <laughs> there they are. We're afraid to go from there over here. Right. Yeah. Get to church tonight. Yeah. I don't care what it looks like out there, get to church. Yeah. My, my pastor calls people that stay home when the weather's bad, he calls them the weatherites. <laughs> like you had the Amorites and the Jebusites <laughs> and the Hittites and all that. He calls them the weatherites. <laughs> A new tribe, he said. We're going we're gonna to be in church. Yes. All right. Let me finish with this. God is faithful. Yeah. Say it with me. God all is faithful. All the time. He's faithful to all his promises. Someone said there are 3,000 promises in this Bible. Someone else said there's over 6,000. I'll tell you this much. 
from Genesis to Revelation, there's a promise on every page. Yes. Amen. That means that 66 books of the Bible, Pastor, right. 66 of the books of the Bible are filled with promises. And who are they for? Jesus. They're for the believer. This is not a book for the, for the heathen. That's right. That's right. This is the Bible. This Bible is a book of promises to the believer. Yes. Yes. That's why I tell you, carry your Bible everywhere. Don't, don't leave it behind. My wife knows. I get in the car. My Bible goes with me. Yes. You want to know why? My this is my this is my motto. That's right. Nobody else says it. Just me. <laughs> I didn't invent it. The Holy Ghost gave it to me. Yes. But I say this: a believer without a Bible is like a plumber without a pipe wrench. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like it. That's cool, isn't it? I like that to me. You say, what good is the plumber come to your house? You say, he says, oh, you got a, you got a clogged pipe down there. And you say, what, can you fix it? He said, no. Why? Because I didn't bring my pipe ring. <laughs> Kick him out of your house. A believer without a Bible is just like that. That's right. When somebody asks you, the Bible says, show yourself approved, a workman unto God, that there be no need of being ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Rightly divide the word of truth. Take them to the Bible. Show them in the word of God. Amen. I was preaching in a church a couple weeks ago and a man challenged me because I was reciting scriptures like I am today at the same time. And he, he raised his hand and I, so I acknowledged him in the middle of my message. And he said, he said, I was talking to them uh, about the power of God. All right? And the greatness of God and Jesus and how Jesus could do anything. He was greater than anything at all. The Bible says that the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Jesus can handle anything. Amen. And so I'm talking to them about that, trying to save time. And he raised his hand. So I acknowledge him. And he says, we don't want to hear you. We don't want to just hear your opinion. Show us in the Bible where it's at. Jesus. That was just the devil. Right. The devil was trying to come and cause havoc. Right. He was trying to see what the people are going to do now. Everybody looked over at him like st 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 stunned. <laughs> Pastor Nathan is looking. Oh, what's Pastor Nathan going to do now? Right. I got my Bible. I walked right up to him. And I said, do you believe that Jesus can do anything? Yeah. I said, yes, I do. I said, then you got 66 books right here, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Go read the 66 books. It'll tell you exactly what you're saying. I don't tell you. That's right. I know exactly where all those scriptures are, but I want you to figure it out. Okay. Came to the altar and got saved. That morning, but by the time we left, he spoke over. He gave me the trouble. Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? I don't mess with the, with, with the Bible. I don't mess with the things of God. Jesus. I'll tell you why. I've been on the other side. I've been in defeat. I've been down and out. I've been where the devil had me all tore up. I'm not going to let him do that anymore. I'm telling you, God is able to do whatever he says he'll do. He will be faithful to all his promises. You see, the Bible says he's a loving God to all that he has made. God is love. The Bible says God is not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. He doesn't want to see the homosexual die and go to hell. He wants to save them. He hates their sin, but he loves their soul. He don't care if you're a Muslim and you believe in, in Muhammad and Allah and all that stuff. He loves you enough to try and get you to change your heart and see that there is only one God. He's called Jehovah God, the God of creation, the God that can do all things. He don't care what you're going through. He can take care of you because he's a loving God. Amen. The Bible tells us his promises are yes and amen. Yes. 2 Corinthians amen. chapter 1. Right. I want you to go to that scripture with me. Amen. We're going to close with this. Thank you. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Because I, I believe there's some of you in here the devil's been messing with you. Amen. 2 Corinthians amen. chapter 1. Thank you. The devil's been messing with you. Read verse 19 and 20 with me. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached, was preached among you by us, by me, Sylvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. Verse 20 says, For all the promises of God, I'm talking to you about the promises of God. Amen. 
All the promises of God in Him are yes and in Him, amen. amen. You know what the word amen means? So be it. That's the way it is. So be it. God said so. To the glory of God through us. So when God says it, in the 80s, we used to have a saying that says, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Amen. Amen. Don't let the 21st century scare you. Yes. Don't let 2013 scare you. Yes. Amen. I'm, I get Social Security. They say Social Security is going to die. By 2020, there'll be no more Social Security. And poor people that are living on Social Security. I ain't never going to live on Social Security. I take the money. I work for it. Jesus. I take it. Jesus. But let them take it away. That's right. Amen. That little measly bit that they give me, I got to double it, triple yes. it. Yes. Yes. Four times yes. Yes. They tell me also, yo, the doctors are going to be harder and harder to find. People, more doctors are not going to take people on Social Security because they won't get paid by the government. It takes them too long to get their payment, so they stop talk, taking care of them. Don't scare me. Amen. You want to know why? Because if that happens, God will just make me more healthy and more healthy and more healthy. Be careful. Be careful. Don't, don't, don't the devil. I already did. Jesus. I'm not afraid of the devil. Amen. For me to live is Christ Amen. and to die is gain. The day that Jesus wants me, I'll lay down. I'm not afraid to die. I used to be afraid to die. I'm not afraid of anything anymore because I serve a big God yes. who says, my God, his yes is yes and amen. Yeah. Well, here's what I want to do with you this morning. I don't know what time you guys go home. If you're like us, you just go home when the Holy Ghost is done. Yes. You say, but I left beans on the stove and they're going to burn when I get there by 12.15. Hallelujah. Either don't put beans on the stove when you know they're going to burn by 12.15. <laughs> or get up earlier and start up earlier so they can be done by 10 before you go to church. Yeah. Thank you. Or just don't make no beans. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. I believe that in this congregation this morning, some of you, the devil's been messing with you. You know, I preached a message one time, and it was about Job. The title of that message was, I can't eat a bite, I can't sleep at night, and the woman I love don't treat me right. <laughs> That's Job's life. <laughs> we all go through that kind of stuff. Yes, problem after problem. Yes. How many of you are old enough to remember Hee Haw? Yeah. Yeah. Remember hee haw? Huh? Remember Clem and hee haw? Yes. Yeah. Used to sing a song? Mm. Used to sing a song, it was entitled, I was saying these words Gloom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> remember those words? Yeah. Some of you people don't remember that. <laughs> Deep down depression, excessive misery. <laughs> If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. <laughs> Does that sound like the church? <laughs> Gloom, despair, and agony on me. My God. Jesus. That's not my church. I don't think it's your church. And you don't have to live in that. We're going to let God have his way. Tonight, I want you to be here. I'm going to preach a, a message entitled, Positioned by God. Amen. But this morning, I'm going to pray with you. Amen. I'm going to believe God for you to be healed. Yes. Yes. At New Hope in Denver, we're seeing miraculous, Amen. miraculous things happen. Amen. I'm telling you, man, we're seeing some great yes. things take place. Yes. Oh, yes. Pastor, that's what's happening here. Yes. I'm telling you why. Because Pastor Vince understands about prayer. One of the things that he says, I have prayer. What time, when is your prayer, Rika? At 6. Uh, At Mondays and Mondays Fridays. Mondays and Fridays. Just like New Hope. Man, I love this. Yeah. Yeah. We don't mind praying. We don't mind praying. We're going to pray. Amen. In Spanish, we used to know a song in the church says, Vamos orando hasta que baje el poder. 
Just pray until the power comes Amen. down. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. You pray. You see the face of God. I want to know something today. If you're sick in body, Amen. Be God. Right back here. Come up here. Come here. Come up here, Mika. Come up here. I feel better the Lord to pray for you. Yeah. Well, that's the key that the devil can mess with your life. Come up here. Hallelujah. Come on up here. Did you can take that bottle off? All right. Now, tell me why you have that bottle. C O P D. Well, because that one. Her lungs aren't working. How many of you know this lady? Man. And she, her lungs aren't working. Well, I want you to know something. COPD is a name, isn't it? We don't even know what it means. Yeah. But it's a name, right? It's just a name. I'm not sure. It's just a name. It's just a name. But do you know something? The name of Jesus is greater Amen. than any other name. The name of Jesus is higher. Did you know something else? That God has a name. They call him Jehovah God. Amen. But God says in his word, he says, I, I, he says, I honor my word above my name. Amen. And you know what his, what his word says? In Isaiah 53, and verse number 5. Well, all those verses in Isaiah 53 say these words. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. I feel the presence of God upon you. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his stripes, or with his stripes, we are healed. Jesus paid for your healing on those lungs. 2,000 years ago, they gave him 39 lashes. The Bible, they say in, in, in uh, medical science, that all diseases come from 39 basic diseases. If that's true, and I have no reason to doubt it because that's what medical science says, that means that Jesus paid with one lash on his back for every disease in the world. And today, I'm going to believe God, the God that we've been talking about, to heal your body, give you brand new lungs. I don't think you heard me. I want God to give you brand new lungs. Yes, Jesus. The only thing that can hold you back is that we think the mountain is too big. But if we understand that the mountain is nothing to God, He'll level it for you. He will level it for you. He will level it for you. You just got to trust Him. Will you trust Him? Will you believe Him? I would just say these words with me. Jesus, I surrender. COPD to you. You are the healer of my body from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. You are now, you are now in charge. And devil, sickness, disease, I command you to leave me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Stretch your hands forward to me. Stretch your hands forward. If you're spirit filled, you begin to speak in other tongues. We're going to pray right now. I'm going to anoint you with oil. And I believe right now for a miracle to take place in your body. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. You're the healer, Father. It's not by might nor by power, it's by your spirit. I don't come in the name of Eddie Espinosa. I don't come in the name of New Hope Ministries. I come in the name of Lord God, the one who created heaven and earth. I pray for my dear sister now. I bind COPD. I bind that interference on her lungs. I command it to loose her now. Go! 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of for your glory, Lord. For your glory. This testimony will reach out. Your glory, my God. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let the Lord help. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Pray with us. Hallelujah. I want every person who you're going through some kind of difficulty right now, whether it be physical, financial, emotional, whatever the case may be, make a line right here. He's he praising God. He's praising God. God is about to do something powerful. Whatever God wants to do, He's going to do it.
bring it with you. Amen. I know God will bless you. Amen. I love you. Amen. We love you. We thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Nick, Sister Susan, Pastor Nathan, Rita, and Mika, you are a blessing to me. I remember when she was a little girl. I never thought she'd grow up like this. Amen. And you're next, Mika. Amen. You watch God do something. You have something powerful. Something I have, for years, I wanted to pray that prayer with her, but I guess whether the Holy Ghost wouldn't let me until this morning. For years, it's not been one year or two years, but years I've been wanting to pray. But the Holy Ghost just wouldn't let me. But I kept her in prayer. Prayer with your brother. Man. Yeah. God's going to change you. God's going to change you. I know it. I know it. And last time I seen him, he was right there on the Nathan motorcycle, if you remember. And I told him then, I said, you know what, Vincent, God's going to get you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, he's gone like me around the wilderness. Got a, got a, I had broke five discs in my back falling off of a house onto a block wall. Couldn't walk anymore. Forgot to get my attention. He has to do yeah, it. Yeah, amen, amen. Work the last three years in that in Phoenix, I couldn't even work. My wife had to support me because I couldn't get up, I couldn't walk. But God got my attention. Amen. When I got back to Denver, Pastor Ray prayed for me, and I could jump with the best of them. Amen. Yeah. 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 You're not seeing the world. You're gonna see it, but you watch it. Said just reminder tonight, service tonight at six. Amen. Come early amen. for prayer at five. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And then uh, new beginnings, Pastor Bobby and all them should be here. Amen. Uh, he wanted me to remind you guys too. If you guys want to go somewhere and eat at Romero's funeral, they're doing a fundraiser for spaghetti dinner there, so you're invited for that. Amen. Amen. But let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence, for your anointing, for your power in this place. We thank you for Pastor Ed, Lord God, and Father God, for the message you preached, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, it will not return and death fears, Lord God. But Father God, it will go into our hearts and penetrate, Lord God. And Father God, accomplish that which you would set out to do, Lord God. And Father God, we're careful. Give me glory, honor, and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus.